welcome or welcome back to B and B Anime. Today I'm here with I think the pretty tired Brad. No, no, not tired. No? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'm tired. I'm blue, by the way. I forgot to introduce myself. Um We had a streak going of not messing up the intro. You know, we every were doing now and again. So well. I just have to keep you on your toes. Just mess up so that you can call me on it. Otherwise, you have no material. You know what? You're right. That I feel like that's all I'm good for is to just give you shit. That's it. That's all <laughs> I bring to the table anymore. My brother did that today. Ooh. He came at me with a smart response. So, okay. So, I've been talking about the past couple of episodes, how we're going to get our house painted. That happened today. We got our house painted. Ooh, yeah. I bet you were big tired. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yesterday and the day before, we were moving furniture, cleaning the walls, prepping, taking off all of the, light fixture switch things, you know, that kind of stuff. And we another thing that we were doing, we had to pull out our refrigerator because we're getting our kitchen painted and the little nook where the refrigerator sits in is painted. So we had to, like, pull the fridge out so that the painter could get behind to paint the fridge, right? Mm-hmm. Not paint the fridge, paint the nook that the fridge goes in. Yeah. And this paint morning, the fridge. <laughs> um, this morning when I was uh, upstairs getting my cup of coffee for the mo- uh, for to survive for the day, I uh, I turned to my brother and I, and I was having a real ADHD moment, and I was in the middle of talking just like this, and all of a sudden I just look at the fridge and I just go, "Why does it have one twenty eight written on the back of our fridge?" And my brother just goes. Because that's how many things are allowed to be in the fridge. <laughs> that's how many things it holds. <laughs> that is amazing. He I made the painter so crack up laughing. She was laughing so hard. <laughs> and he started laughing at his own joke. He was crying laughing at his own joke. He thought it was the funniest thing. And that's I was laughing. Great. So I was telling him that he can't laugh at his own joke. And he couldn't even argue back because he was crying laughing at his own stupid response to my question that's how you know you can't be bothered right there Mm. (laughs) so yeah that's how that's how my day's been how has your day been i can't complain tennis got rained out today that was that was a thing Mm. have you been getting any smoke around by you from because i don't i don't know how the weather winds are traveling but i know up here in alberta we are getting smoke coming from the california flyers so um and that's a long ways away so i don't know if you're getting any smoke from the we, california flyers yourself we aren't getting anything here mhm but that's interesting that y'all are getting them yeah we get a, well we're right on the mountains so we tend to get a lot of forest fires ourselves up here and we also have a lot of uh firefighters that tend to go down to california to help them out with the california fires that happen every year and vice versa mm-hmm. whatever because our fire seasons are slightly different in canada and california so when like the big bc and alberta fires are happening it's kind of pre-fire season in california usually there are some early fires that happen in california but like our fire season is kind of july ish whereas in california it tends to be more august september time you know huh that's interesting Mm -hmm. and it's because our seasons are so much shorter so our summer like right now is autumn for me and like let me see what the temperature is yeah it's like 14 degrees celsius right now so it's not super cold but it's not summer weather either all the trees are turning yellow it's been pretty gloomy all day it's been warm but it's not like summer weather you know Mm Hmm. so for U.S. American people, that's 57 degrees. Yeah. So that's sure. definitely, like, flannel weather for us. Yeah. Yeah, it's the kind of weather where if you're in the shade, you're going to want, like, a, a like a layer on, on top of your t-shirt, you know? Because the shade's cold, but the sun's warm. That kind of weather. So I got a lavender hoodie in the mail today. Ooh, I love lavender. I know. <laughs> Whenever I ordered it, I was like, Blue's gonna be jealous. I am. I don't have a lavender hoodie. I have two lavender jumpers. I'm gonna have to send you a picture. Yeah, I don't have a lavender hoodie. I own a lot of lavender stuff, though. Hmm. Yeah, I own very little. I have lavender suspenders, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, fancy. Yeah, I had to get them for Tyree's wedding, so I have those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, When I was really little, I went to a cousin's wedding and her theme was pink. So my dad has a pink tie. Well, he had a pink tie. It is now my pink tie um, that he he got for 
her wedding. Um, huh. Yeah. Speaking of you having a tie, I don't mean to get into the news so early. However, are you excited for the Harry Potter RPG? Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm like, for what? What's going on? Yeah, no, totally I am. Because I just got to thinking, the reason that popped into my head is because I got to thinking... If you talk about it being your tie, and then my brain immediately went to your Slytherin cosplay, and I was like, oh yeah, Harry Potter RPG, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm i very, I think you guys know by now that I'm very particular about, you know, beating a dead horse, and Harry Potter is a dead horse. Very, very much so, at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I do have this, like, for instance, I own Cursed Child, the play, mm-hmm. but I've never read it. I can't bring myself to touch it. And I've never seen any of the Fantastic Beasts films. And, like, I I don't know. I really liked Harry Potter, but everything that they're coming out with, all of the new, like, the money-grabbing stuff, Mm -hmm. just feels wrong. And so I tend to avoid it, unless it's, I don't know, just a bit of fun, and I can kind of separate it in my brain Mm -hmm. from, like, the main story. But then again, like, ugh, the Harry Potter isn't written by... Harry Potter is now an autobiography, right? So Yeah, Harry Potter is just a sacred text that just got magically dumped on the planet. Yeah, because that also ruins the vibe Yeah, a lot. However, this is like its own kind of standalone thing with it being an yeah. RPG and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm willing to give it a pass and I'm willing to give it a try. Because I'm definitely along the same lines as you in that I think the whole Harry Potter franchise is definitely turning into what disney is doing with star wars and just milking it for every last penny they can get out of it 100 percent, yeah and it's it's so disappointing it, it like is. leaves a bad taste in your mouth every time you think about something that was such a huge part of your childhood mm-hmm. yet again like i said i'm willing to give it a pass because it's mm-hmm. a fresh story and it's a true rpg i'm not sure how that's all going to play out and how it's actually going to come across once the game actually comes out yeah i i'm willing to to also give it a shot for those reasons as well i i've enjoyed the harry potter games that have come out i've played quite a few of them i had harry potter and the chamber of secrets on game boy advance and i had harry potter and the order of the phoenix on playstation 2 Mm-hmm. And then I didn't have any of the others of the the main games, but then I did play Harry Potter Lego one through seven on stream, mm-hmm. and those were fun. I did enjoy those. Yeah, I feel like typically they've always done a good job with the video games. Mm-hmm. And with this being, like I said, its own brand new story, brand new storyline, everything else, and depending on how well they use the RPG elements. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm interested. I'm intrigued about it. I just, yeah, it's going to be one of those things that I'm going to have to separate in my brain from the rest of the franchise, just like I've kind of separated Fantastic Beasts as its own, et- own entity. The author no longer exists. Like all of these other things that I've just kind of separated from what Harry Potter was. To me, Harry Potter ended at Deathly Hallows Part 2, and that's kind of where I'm having to leave it. So. I did a thing. Mm-hmm. I might have bought every volume of the Demon Slayer manga. Oh, just casually. Just casually, because I don't just know if casually. I mentioned this a few weeks back, but I've been having a negotiation war on eBay with Yeah, a you did say. So we've been going back and forth a little bit for the past little while, and I got super petty. Just, just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Just a little bit. I finally got them talked down to where I was comfortable for paying for it. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. They wanted to charge me $6 for shipping. I didn't want to pay $6 for shipping. Mm -hmm. So now that I finally got them down to where I was comfortable for paying, I was like, "Mm, no, you know what? I'm going to take off $6 from the total price. That way I don't have to pay for shipping. (laughs) And it got accepted. So, hey, (laughs) win-win. Win-win. I'm glad you got your hands on them, though. I am excited to hear what you have to say about reading them. I was actually supposed to do some some manga reading homework this week, and I never got around to doing it. So I know I was supposed to finish off Fuka, the manga, between last week and this week, but I, I never got around to it. We went camping this weekend, which I had a great time. It was great fun. It was very cold. Mountains are cold in September. What? Um, it's because they're no. all closing. All the campsites are closing now. Like, we went there and it was like, there were like three campsites open. We're like, okay, great. Because it's off season now. But yeah, no, it was great. We saw grizzly bear and two cubs and a lot of park rangers with some some really big weaponry. <laughs> 
and a group of about 10 cyclists who were tourists that were shaking in their little boots, surrounded by all of these Canadian park rangers that were just chilling. They were just watching. Just obviously, because like we were in bear territory, like bear, bears weren't in our territory. So they weren't going to make a move on the bear unless the bear made a move on us. So yeah, they were just watching from a distance, making sure it didn't get near the road and near the cyclists. But like the cyclists couldn't move on because they had to stay by the park rangers. So there was just a group of like 10 cyclists that were just huddling around each other. And it was cold that day. It was cold. So obviously it's not so cold when they're moving, but because they were paused, they would obviously had been cycling for a while. So they were covered in sweat and then standing still. And then there's a bear... (laughs) And so they looked very uncomfortable and I, I did feel a bit bad for them. But yeah, I mean, it's one of the risks you take from, from being up in the in the mountains. We saw some deer, a stag with his big old antlers. But we saw uh, elk, I think. Heard some coyotes, but we hear coyotes out here where I'm at. So that wasn't too, like, I go to sleep to the sound of coyotes. <laughs> And I think that was it for wildlife. I mean, obviously, like, the little, like, groundhogs and things like that and the chip monkey things. I never know what they're called. Prairie dogs. Them things. And a couple eagles. A couple bald eagles. Uh, lots of geese. They're all flying south. Some ravens. A big old raven that w- flew so close to above our heads that we could hear the sound of its wings flapping in the wind. And that was really weird. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That's what that. I gather from that is that you have a lot of art material for art streams for the next little while. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I hadn't thought about that, but um, yeah, we could do we could do some some Canadian wildlife. Yeah. Yeah, I did take my paints. I did one painting on a park bench up there, but then I fell asleep. So it's a half finished <laughs> painting. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. The sun was warm on my back and I was wearing like seven layers. And you know how you get like warm sleep? Mm-hmm. And I I just was there one minute and gone the next. Well, I'm glad you had a great time. Mm. It was nice to get away for a bit. Oh, I'm sure. I don't doubt that in the slightest. I always feel like some kind of like adventurer every time I go camping. I always feel like I'm laughing. I'm like, I am now an elf. <laughs> <laughs> this is my mountain. <laughs> this is mine. You mm. cannot have it. Behold my power of the wilderness. I can control the flowers, the wind, and the waters. Behold, ye who <laughs> all come against me, ye shall fall. Thy brethren bow before me. But anyways, I guess we ought to get a move on with stuff that we should actually be talking about rather than my weird adventures running through the mountains barefoot. You you act like we actually have something to talk about this week because our topic we were supposed to cover was a lie. Yes, yeah. Okay, so tell us the story, Brad. The story of the lie. So, seeing yesterday for me was requested by a friend of mine, and they said it would be great for us to cover in September for Music Month. Sounds like it would be, with the title, Sing Yesterday for Me. You would assume. So I held this person to their word. You, good person, are a fucking liar. A liar! Dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow. (laughs) So much dishonor. (laughs) So... Literally last minute, because as is 100% typical with how Blue and I do these things, Mm. I edit the podcast all the way through to Sunday, take Sunday off, if I'm finished early enough, and then start the anime on Monday. I start the anime Monday night, Blue isn't back from camping yet, and I get all the way through to episode 6, and then I'm like, you know, I don't think this has anything to do with music. Mm. The closest thing this show had to do with music was one of the side supporting characters was in a band. That was it. Nice. There's an ED to the show. The show doesn't even have an OP. It has an ED. Now, don't get me wrong. The show is really good. I enjoy it. However, it's not romance month. It's music month. So we had to stop everything we were doing and come up with a new show to cover. So we this did. week, we are covering k Season 1. k Season one, yes. So there is two seasons and a movie? 
two seasons and a film. Season one is one core. Season two is two core. Season one also had two bonus episodes. Mm-hmm. And they're all on Netflix, or at least they're on Canadian Netflix. Canadian Netflix. They were also on American Netflix. So, on America! So you can find all of your K-On needs on Netflix if you're in K-On the US Netflix. or Canada. But if you are outside of the US or Canada, I don't know where you can find it. Best of luck. Before we get into discussing more on K-On, um, news. PS5 has officially been announced. It has a release date of... November 12th in the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea, and everywhere else on November 19th. The price points for the PS5 are the regular PS5 is going to be running for 500 US dollars, mm-hmm. and the digital only option, which to my knowledge is exactly the same, just minus a disk drive, is 400 US dollars. Hundred dollars for a disk drive. Hundred dollars for a disk drive. I that's probably reasonable. I mean, no, well, that's not reasonable. I mean, like the price is expected. That's kind of what everyone else, uh, what everyone was expecting between four, four and five hundred dollars. I feel like people were even expecting it to be a little bit more than that. Well, I feel like the price on the standard edition was to be expected because obviously they're trying to compete with the Xbox that was released at the exact same price point. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. The digital only version of the Xbox actually comes in at 300 US dollars, not right, 400. Right, so it's still a $100 price. Uh, now, $100. it's been speculated or it might even be confirmed at this point. I'm not 100% certain, but the digital only version of the Xbox actually has a little bit cheaper in specs as well. Oh, okay. Whereas with the PS5, we're not certain if it's going to be cheaper in specs or not because we haven't gotten the full list of specs yet. Right. So I don't know how I feel about it Mm -hmm. because I kind of want more information. Do we have any more news? We do have more news. More news. Nintendo has officially confirmed the Super Mario Bros. film will be opening in 2022. Right. Okay. (laughs) I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Uh huh. I also. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm also concerned. Yeah. I'm uh, going to leave that one there. Because I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be bad. I want to see a trailer before I make any sort of assumption. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope if we get a trailer that's like the first Sonic trailer, then they listen. Hopefully so. We can only hope. We can only hope. Now, are you ready for some exciting news? Yeah, sure. So, the given anime film has officially sold over 100,000 tickets. Ooh, that's good. That's good. So... In box office revenue, that's over a million dollars in sales. Is that internationally? I think that's just in Japan, because I don't know anywhere international that's showing the film. I was going to say, I didn't think it was getting an international release. So that is super interesting and awesome. And yeah, I enjoyed the series. I'm excited for the film. I thought I had good music in it. And speaking of music, for music month... That was one that we have covered previously, given the first season, first and only season so far. That is a romance, it is a BL, and it's about music and band and kind of rock, pop rock, soft pop, cunt, like uh, uh, punk rock, Birds. soft uh-huh. yes. pop, <laughs> you, 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 full out boy kind of stuff. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't really know what genre of music it is. It's that kind of like in between pop punk, pop rock kind of area, I think. Definitely wasn't as pop rock as what we're covering today. No. It's like soft boy <laughs> pop rock. <laughs> <laughs> Flower crowns on pop rock and that's what you get. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. All right. So... <laughs> But that's one that we've covered in the past, Um, and so if you're interested in hearing us talk about that, then that is a previous anime episode that we have discovered, so head on over to our website or our YouTube channel if you would like to discover it, um, because it's going to be in our archives there to, yeah, listen. You can find it. Yeah. We also got a lot of game announcements and new trailers for stuff. I thought you said gay, and I was like, I'm down for some gay announcements. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, game announcements, that makes more sense. What are we going with? (laughs) 
So Final Fantasy 16. Right. God of War 2. Right. Hogwarts Legacy, which uh, we've already discussed to this point. Mm-hmm. We got new trailers for Resident Evil 8, which is giving me really weird Outlast vibes. Okay. I don't know if you've seen or watched anything on Outlast. I know you're not much of a horror game person, even though we all force you to play horror games in October. Yeah. But there were other shit that was announced that just completely skipped my mind. But the lineup for the next few months to a year is absolutely massive and stacked. I am extremely excited for everything that's coming out and also Mm. extremely happy that i have a beefy enough pc to be able to play what's actually going to be multi-platform yeah because who needs a next-gen console whenever you have a beefy pc yeah okay so back to the playstation thing are you gonna get one i'm gonna wait Mm -hmm. because for one i need to make sure that it's more or less worth my money Two, at Mm -hmm. this point, it doesn't do me any good to try to get one, because if I get Mm -hmm. one, I'm going to have to get something that's completely price gouged. Mm -hmm. But I've basically always been a Sony person. I have owned every iteration of the PlayStation since it has come out. So I will end up eventually getting it, because Sony is definitely the leader for console exclusives. Because with God of War, Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, although I can't even necessarily consider Horizon Zero Dawn a console exclusive, since they poured it over to the pc yeah although the pc version i i don't know if you've seen any gameplay on it or if you've seen the story but i think you personally would absolutely adore it interesting because it's i'm trying to think of a way to describe it it's an extremely strong and charismatic female lead fighting robo dinosaurs in a primitive world where you use a bow and arrow i'm listening it's For one, it's one of the easiest games to complete and get a platinum if you're a trophy hunter. So for people that enjoy games where you get trophies and achievements and everything else, I highly recommend it. But for you personally, the narrative is extremely excellent. The story is awesome. The visuals are phenomenal. And I feel like you personally wouldn't have that hard of a time with the combat system. You might get a little frustrated with it, but you, I feel like you could figure it out, especially with a mouse and keyboard. Well, you know how I feel about archery. I know it's right up your alley. It's so, it's so up my alley. Archers are just the coolest. Like, just the idea of just like having a a stick and a piece of string and another stick and you just kill people with that <laughs> um, <laughs> like that's cool I'm quoting that and uploading that everywhere because <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing if ever there were a sound bite to take from this episode that is the one you just, I mean how you else just do you take a stick it? and a piece of string and then you take another stick and then you kill people <laughs> that's, well that's what you do <laughs> you're not wrong but i love it in it, it, its most simplest of forms <laughs> that's it that is 100 percent it uh but archers are so freaking cool like robin hood yes please i mean you can tell it's a feared profession whenever to like whenever older armies would capture archers they would cut off their fingers yeah, that's why us Brits do the two finger swear. What you consider, like you know how so like pieces palm forward, uh huh, flip that around, uh huh. That's a swear in Britain. If you do that to a Brit, they'll be angry with you. Unless you're joking, then they'll laugh at you. Oh, ah, cool. Yeah. So just bear in mind, Americans, if you go if you go to Britain and you want to do a peace sign, please do it palm forward. Yes. <laughs> or else you might get thumped. Now I just want to see um, somebody get thumped. <laughs> yeah, well, because um, I think it had, it was most likely between the French and the British. But yeah, I think what happened was during some war, the French started cutting off the Brits' fingers, like you said, when archers were captured. And so in retaliation, because British people are petty, we would then, uh, from a distance, hold up our two fingers with our nails facing them and that was a sign of like basically na 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 I've still got my fingers you can't get me kind of thing and then eventually it meant fuck off basically and now it's just yeah it's just like piss off you're a dick effective sign 
We have learned something today. Yeah, and technically palm forward in Britain actually means victory as opposed to peace, but because peace is like the common use of it now because of Americans, um, it means both. But to the older generation, palm forward actually means victory over peace. V3! Exactly, V for victory. Or vendetta, nah. Um. I'm sure that was a throwback for you for a second. Yeah, you haven't done that in a while. Well, we also haven't gamed together in a while. That's true. And I'm I'm really sad about this. So sad. You've you've forgotten all about me. I haven't. All by myself. It's not my fault. You quit streaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting sassy. But we always did that for your stream. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's because I'm your, selfish. What's your what's your rebuttal on that one? Huh? Peasant. I'm selfish. I am the center of the universe. The world revolves around me. I am narcissistic. <laughs> I'm quoting every bit of this for future <laughs> reference. <laughs> no, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, great. I have that Cheers. quoted, written in my phone. So we're covered. So, K-On. K-On. <laughs> okay. I can't, I can't recover from that. Hang on. I'll piece it together <laughs> eventually. K-On ought to sound extremely familiar to you all because we have talked about the same studio and director before. And Has by been. before, I mean literally two weeks ago. <gasps> but before we get into the actual studio that made the anime, it was initially a manga written by Cocky Fly? Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Why did I just get the image of like a fly that's like, mm, you can't touch me? <laughs> <laughs> Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. Can't touch this. So it had its initial run from April 9th of 2007 to June 28th of 2012 for a total of six volumes. Oh, that's not as much as I thought there would be. I thought there'd be more content than that. You would think with the amount of show, OVAs, and film that there would be a lot mm -hmm. more than that, but there is not. Yeah. It's also a while ago. It really was. The every bit of this aired before every bit of this shit aired before 2011 was over. Wow, it feels way more modern than that. I guess it does. Of its time the especially the animation on all of the instruments and whatnot. Like I felt like it did a phenomenal job with it, and also it didn't push your buttons of fingers not actually touching the strings. Yes, yeah, it, it was better than the last anime that we covered where guitarists' fingers were touching their strings and moving every now and again. So good for you for being better than Fuka, but also you have to take into account it was Kyoto Animation that made this. Mm -mm. So Liz and the Bluebird, Violet Evergarden, Sound Euphonium, etc., etc. So they kind of, they never go wrong whenever it comes to animation. I have a pink paint, paint splodge on my desk that looks like a flamingo. Weren't you going to clean it off of your glass desk? Yep. You know what works well for that? What? Denatured alcohol. I wonder if nail varnish remover would work. That's acetone. acetone. That's not good for your desk. That's not good for glass. Oh yeah, didn't think about that. Denatured alcohol is a glass cleaner and it's harsh enough to get through acrylics, but not harsh enough to get through alkyds. So therefore, it will get your paint off and will also clean your glass while you're at it. Are you secretly like, what is it, Aunt Agatha or whatever it is in the newspaper? When it comes to paint and colors, yes. <laughs> yeah, but I have a flamingo on my desk. I just thought I'd share. You should take a picture of it, post it on the Instagram, do your- But isn't- You should- It's just a blob that just kind of vaguely looks like a flamingo. Now I feel like I put too much pressure on it. <laughs> and it's only my ADHD brain that's gonna see the flamingo and nobody else is gonna see it. <laughs> You're just gonna have to upload it onto <laughs> the Instagram. I'm gonna screenshot it, get on my iPad and draw a little flamingo into it and be like, that's better. <laughs> It's it's not on its leg, it's like swimming, but it's only the head that looks like a flamingo, but it also looks like a cartoon flamingo, not a real flamingo. It looks like a Disney flamingo, and it looks like a male flamingo, even though it's, yeah, it's got like a, a quiff, like it's hazel, like Daddy Zuko'd, and it kind of has elf ears, and it's got a hole in its wing. His head's way too big for its body, that's not proportionate at all, but I suppose that makes it look cartoony. Uh-huh. His name's... Arrol. I was going to go with Philip. I have an uncle, Phil. Ip. <laughs> I Lip. was about to make a Fresh Prince joke, but you wouldn't get it. 
So this is a story all about how my life got flipped and upside down. So, how do you find Will Smith in the, in the snow? You look for the Fresh Prince. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what joke did I tell my mom today? Um, there's also a stupid joke like that. Oh yeah, it was the one that was like, God came, f- uh, said to John, come forth and you shall win eternal life. John came fifth and won a toaster. <laughs> you know that joke? <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's, it's, it's a stupid run. <laughs> anyway, Keon! <laughs> yeah, my, my, my brain, it's, it's, it's done. You broke it. You, you did, you did the thing. It's, it's such a stupid joke. John came fifth and won a toaster. Keon! <laughs> Keon! Oh... Editing me, you, you have you have a lot of fucking work ahead of you. I'm sorry, future Brad. Yeah, I I am also sorry to future me. Where is I going with this? We need more background information. We got to studio, whatever it was. Naoko Yamada, also the director for Liz and the Bluebird, a silent voice, and that's it. <laughs> that was a really long and, <laughs> but. Yeah. But, yeah. So um, the initial show ran from April 3rd of 2009 through June 26th of 2009. Yes. Again, for a show that's 11 years old, I never would have thought. No, I would have put would... this. I'd have put this at release uh, 2017. I was thinking probably a little bit further back to 13 or 14. Yeah. Because I felt like the character animations were a little bit dated, but all of the rest of the animation on the instruments and how fluid it was was a little bit more modern. I can see that. I did see that, like, in my mind, the animation kind of vaguely reminds me of, like, My Hero Academia and Little Witch Academia, for some reason. Both the Academias. I don't know why, but that's that's where my brain goes with the animation, which isn't accurate at all. They're not, it's not, like completely like that but it, i kind of get that vibe from it hmm. so you know what's interesting what this show is older than kids on the slope yet the animation is basically a dead ringer for one another yeah because kids on the slope was done in 2012 so we know at the very least it's about three years ahead of its time yeah fun fact i'm surprised i didn't hear about this back in the day this was during my high school hiatus of anime stupid anime stupid anime's for nerds so, random thought, but the way you said mm-hmm. that reminded me of how Kokoro from Kokoro. Darling and the Hall- oh, Fuck. Totoro. You, Maybe that's what you it You killed from. my brain. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> I just couldn't pronounce anything when you do that. I'm, so- I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, anyway, the point I was trying to make about Kokoro. Oh, right, yeah, that was the thing. Moogie. From this show reminded me so much of Kokoro. Yeah. Like, did that semblance not strike you at all while you were watching this? No, but it does now that you've said that. I feel like they might have even had the same English voice actors because since this was on Netflix, I automatically just watched it dubbed because I was too lazy to fucking change it. Ah, uh, <laughs> see, Netflix knows me so well that it plays them subbed. I don't have to change it. You see, typically... It- Plays mine sub too, but this time it was just like, mm, you know what? Nah, you're you're gonna watch it dubbed, which thankfully it did because if it tried to make me watch it subbed, I wouldn't have finished this shit. If we had recorded this when we were supposed to, this shit would have been finished anyway. Yeah. But you never would have known the difference. Mm-hmm. Nah, because you see, you only like to ask me questions after the first two episodes, and then after that, you just fully go into it. So I could have easily just played it off with, uh huh, yeah. Now I'm going to make a point to ask you questions to the very last episode, or at least in the later episodes. I might skip the middle and then just like on the last few episodes, ask you questions. Don't do it while I'm zoned out. That's not fair. (laughs) (laughs) Don't zone me out. (laughs) Rude. Says the person who punches a donut while I'm speaking. Hey, just because my hands have to be active doesn't mean my brain is not also paying attention. So before we get into a brief description of the show... What did you think about the OPED, all the music and whatnot? Oh, okay. Decent. Uh, I won't say that it was, like, my favorite thing, but I also don't think that they were trying to make 
get necessarily like songs that immediately go on your phone to listen to all the time. I feel like they were kind of purposefully making them f- f- set around the characters and and like weird, <laughs> quirky, the lyrics especially. Because that's like kind of a thing throughout the show. So yeah, I enjoyed them. I thought they were good. I I won't listen to them outside of the show. So one thing I noticed, I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but the OP changed whenever they added a new person to the band. Like anytime somebody new was added, they changed the animation to add in that person. Mm Mm-hmm. But the ED did not. Now, one thing I did find really quirky, but also awesome about the difference between the OP and the ED, the ED felt more like a music video. Yeah. Whereas the OP felt more like an OP. Yeah. Agreed. But I enjoyed the music throughout the show. I feel like the dub actors that they chose definitely suited the artists who they had performing the music or the japanese vocals for singing so did they keep the japanese vocals um with the dub they did they did not pull a fuka and initially put in the japanese for the dub and then fucking change it to english okay cool <laughs> Ooh, that that still gets me hot still grinds I don't wanna, gears. that still makes me angry i don't want to talk about it but anyway yeah, the music was overall enjoyable. Definitely wasn't my favorite. I still thought the soundtrack and everything to Fuka was better. But I feel like everything in the show definitely suited what was going on around it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked that the lyrics are quirky. It is a, a plot point in the story, briefly. But I thought it suited them as characters. I think mm-hmm. that the music suited them as characters. I would have maybe liked to have seen some more like i don't know solo moments where you get to see each member kind of be really awesome Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you don't really get that satisfactory oh this person's really sick at doing this one thing except for one character who they make who appears later on in the show who they like make a big deal out of but there's one specific character that appears pretty quickly in the beginning who is supposed to be really really good at what she does but you never get to see her like prove it you just Mm -hmm. hear that she's good yeah like i like how they made a you know they made it a plot point for a minute to do band introductions like during any of the shows and then they never do yeah because as someone who's been to concerts i really enjoy the introduction parts of the shows where they let each person kind of do their own thing for a minute yeah Mm mm-hmm Because this show had a bad habit of lingering on certain scenes and whatnot for too long. Agreed. And I think that time could have been better suited for those other areas. I can't necessarily dock points for that. Because whenever they did it, it was for comedic moments. So I get it. But it still felt like it drugged too long at certain points. Yeah. So there's one episode in particular that when I first started watching it, I was like, this is my favorite episode so far. Halfway through the episode, I got really bored and was bored all the way through to the end of the episode. But it started off such a good episode. And I was like, this is a killer episode. Halfway through, I was like, "Mm." And I zoned out. So, you know what tickled me? What? The school statue throughout the show. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah, I that I noticed that one as well. That tickled me as well. Like, every time it changed. Like, yeah. I was it was either wearing different hats or it was animated differently. Yeah. I don't know if they were just taking the piss, whatever they were doing that shit. I don't know. I really liked when they put the scarf around it to make it look like an old lady. And then they gave it a sun hat the very next time. Yeah, yeah. Then they just yeah, animated really it as a different old dude the very next yeah. time. I was like, what, yeah. what, what the fuck is what? this? <laughs> yeah. And then and they that was gave a really it good Onigiri. scene transition. Yeah, I really liked that. I thought that was fun. Oh. So there were some good points. I definitely agree with you that certain scenes um, dragged out too much. And I feel like there was definitely times where I felt like they were holding back or the jokes didn't quite land the way that they wanted them to. And I'm not sure if that's a translation thing or if the jokes just weren't funny. I feel like a lot of it might have been a translation thing because I did think the dub was hilarious. Yeah. Like I wound up laughing a lot more than anything else throughout the show. But also yeah. because of that, feel like the serious points never were too serious, I guess. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay, uh, overall description of K-On! before we literally have you here for seven hours. It is about a first year and second year, it's span over two years, and it's, yeah, it's about first year a high school group that are a bunch of girls that are just like, 
I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know what club I would have joined. And then they're like, hey, um, we should join the Light Music Club. And then they find out the Light Music Club has no members. And so one of the girls is like, well, I'll just, <laughs> Ritsu is just like, well, I'll just become the president then. <laughs> and I'll just make this club. And then so she goes around and gathers a bunch of other people to join this Light Music Club. It is all girls school that they go to. So all of the members of the club end up being female. And they start a band. And it's about them <laughs> not playing in the band. <laughs> they, it's about them having anime talent <laughs> and, and about seriously ditzy main character you who is really ditzy and yeah it's just about them being friends and them learning about each other learning about music and not doing anything and it's a comedy so there's a lot of stupid jokes and classic anime tropes that you get to see within the first three seconds yeah the first episode was tropes galore they yep. were having a time whenever they made this but i loved it anyway absolutely Literally, my first note of the first episode is toast. So, so yeah, let's put on our spoiler hats. Like we said before, there is two full seasons of this. Three segments. Three, two. In the first season, there's just the first... There's just a... <sighs> it's three core. Twelve episodes Thank for you. season one. Bonus OVA episodes. Two core for season two. And then... A movie. A film. Yes. I appreciate you bailing me out there. My brain stopped working. You're welcome. See, that that's, that's what this partnership's for. It's <laughs> not just for me I giving do. you shit. I have to, you know, dig you out of holes. Yeah, I tend to bury myself in them. Anyway, spoiler hats <laughs> are on. So let's jump into the first episode, which is called Disband the Club. Toast! I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna become a neat if I don't join a club. Second trope. But yeah, a seriously dizzy first year high school student, Yuri, is having troubles finding a club to join. Meanwhile, the Light Music Club is going to be disbanded because if they don't get four members by the end of the month, they can no longer be considered a club. Da, da, da. So scary. Slice of life trope. Yes. They managed to acquire a keyboard player Mugi, who has never eaten fast food before, to go along with a headstrong drummer, who is the president Ritsu, and her friend, who was dragged along, and is a bassist Mio. Um, and those three of them have created this club, and they are struggling to find a fourth member. Mugi actually wanted to join the choir originally, but she anime troped found herself all of a sudden in the light music club. Mio, wait, no, that's not true. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Um, Take it back now, y'all. One half this time. The club manages to persuade you to join them, even though she has never picked up a guitar before, and the club is saved. And yeah, so that's basically the first episode, is just forming the club, who they are, lots of different anime tropes, them, them establishing who each character is, their characteristics. For instance, Mugi is really rich. She does not know how to interact with everyday life stuff, although she just wants to be a normal teenager. Ritsu is our drummer. She is wild and... Your sporty girl. She is the sporty spice of the girls. Mio is serious and does music, but gets seriously embarrassed when anything embarrassing happens, which uh, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, and she's also terrified of terrifying things. And then Yui, who is so ditzy that whenever she learns something, she forgets the previous thing that she learned. Do you feel like they were having a great time whenever they were naming the characters in this? Yeah. Ui, Yui, Mugi. Yep, yep. They just like to make it really hard for non-Japanese speakers to review the show. Yeah, make it really hard for the two of us who have trouble speaking in general as it is. Try yeah, to I talk can't about speak English. it. English is my first language and I don't even know. Yeah, there's a reason we have word commands set up in our stream. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, episode that two. is the first episode. Uh, the second episode is called Instrumental. Yui man uh, needs to get a guitar, so they all go shopping for one after she asks for an advance on her allowance. However, when they're at the music shop, she falls in love with one that is way outside of her budget. It's She thinks it's kawaii. She's like, that's a cute guitar. It is very m masculine. It's a very stereotypical, when you think electric guitar, you picture the one that is orange and red. You know the kind. 
That's the one with the thick neck, the weight. That's the one that she looks at and she goes, kawaii. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> kawaii. <laughs> but yeah, it is way outside of her budget. So they decide that they are going to get a temp job for them all to save up money so that they can buy this guitar for her so that they can start practicing. And so they end up working as traffic surveyors. They have those little like clicky counter things. Um, and every time a car or a person passes, they have to click the thing to count the traffic and thus survey them so that people may know how many there were. I wish I could do that as a real job. But no. Instead, I do fucking customer service. Eh. The fuck? The fuck? What am I doing um, with my life? I don't know. I want out. Well, we are recording a podcast, so perhaps that's better. I mean, this is the highlight of my week. Don't get me wrong. The highlight of my life. And I never felt this way before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they get this job as traffic surveyors. However, Yuri ends up feeling really guilty when uh, they go to give her the paychecks after they finish the job because, like, that's their money. They earned it. So she's like, why are you giving it to me when I can buy a cheaper guitar? So she's like, I'll just get a cheaper one. You keep all your money. So she goes to the music shop and she goes to look at all the cheaper ones. But girls turn and they see her still fully in love with the guitar that she cannot afford. And that's when Mugi chan haggles with the salesman and it turns out that she's actually the company president's daughter so he loves the price and you get a new guitar for <laughs> way too low i mean i was gonna say with her being who she is is that really haggling it's not at all but she thinks it is i love the way that she haggles too how she's so unsure about herself but she's like can you go lower <laughs> she's like i would like to haggle and he's like Okay. And, and the way like, that he recognizes her is because of how bushy her eyebrows are. <laughs> like, I like how the animation fades out to where it's just the eyebrows and it's like, ding, ding, ding. And he's like, oh, wait, hang on. He pulls out his calculator and starts just crunching numbers really he's quick. He's like, this is the lowest I can go. And she's like, you can do better. And just the way she says it, too. It's like she's almost questioning it. Like, she's still not sure of herself. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can do better than that. <laughs> yeah and then he's like fine 500 yeah and so yeah she ends up getting a new guitar episode three cram session yui fails her midterm exams because she was practicing guitar when she should have been studying so Trope and number like 37 yes she also <laughs> dressed her guitar up in different outfits slept with it fed it food put a bib on it <laughs> she's <laughs> she yeah very in love with that guitar. And anyway, so yeah, she fails her midterm exams. And so she has to take a makeup exam. And until she can pass her makeup exam, she is technically banned from all club activities. And thus, she is no longer a member of the club. And thus, they don't have enough members to officially be recognized as a club. So the girls help her study for a cram session the night before her makeup exam, as she sucks at studying herself because she, I'm fairly certain, is like me in the ADHD department. However, when she applies herself, she ends up getting a hundred on the exam. But because of the fact that she now has retained all of this information of exam knowledge, she has forgotten every single chord and everything that she has learnt upon the guitar because she can only hold a certain amount in her brain capacity. Same. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> episode four, training camp. Beach episode! Trope number 85. Chart number 85. Mio finds an old recording of the Light Music Club when they were, and they were like way better than the girls are currently. Especially considering that they've been together for three months, but have yet to play together as a group because they just sit around and have tea all day. So she suggests that they have a training camp. And they all end up going to Mugi's smallest summer home, the giant mansion, and goof around where they should be practicing. But it's okay because Yuri is magically incredibly talented. And they have a very sweet friendship bonding moment. And this episode, I put in my notes, I'm excited to hear them perform properly at the upcoming festival because after summer, after the training camp, there's going to be a school festival and they are due to perform there. And yeah, I, I put in my notes, I was excited to hear them perform. But yeah, this is the first episode where you have to try and figure out whether or not Yui is genius or really stupid. 
both? Yeah, because she can do things that are really weird. Like, she has literally picked up a guitar three months ago for the first time. And at this point, she's, like, playing awesome guitar riffs and is, like, lead guitarist and stuff. And everyone's like, what's going on? And it's one of those... It's so... She's confusing. Because the whole time you're watching it, you're like, I don't know. I just don't know. Great show. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Everyone always says in her life that um, if she applies herself, she does really well. And that's 100% true. When she applies to something, she is literally perfect genius level. But other than that, she is so stupid. You know what's even more scary than that? What? Her sister being 10 times better than she is. I actually put that in my notes when that happens, yeah. But just in general, like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, her sister is something, all right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, episode five, Advisor. With the festival quickly approaching, they go to student council to acquire a time slot. However, they aren't officially recognised as a club because Ritsu forgot to fill out the form, and so they don't actually, and they don't have an advisor either. So they end up going to beg their sweet music teacher, but she refuses because she already has her hands full. Until da, 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 it is revealed that she was actually the guitarist of the old heavy metal like music club wearing crazy makeup and stuff. Well, heavy metal makeup. And they end up using that as blackmail materials to get her into advising for them. This is the episode where I was like, this is my favourite episode so far. That whole first part where she they blackmail her into being the music teacher, into being their advisor, so funny. Her sprinting through the hallways like a freaking demon slayer moment. So funny. I was dying. It was so great. good. And then I zoned out for the rest of the half of the second half of the episode because it got boring. I was mad about that. Nah, you had to go into like traumatic backstory of the teacher. It's called character development. <laughs> Oh, I was bored. Can Mia confirm, writes, Blue Thanks plot is boring. Hey, certain kinds of plot I find very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> but then, so yeah, the second half of the episode is about Mia writing cute lyrics to their original song. But you is supposed to sing them, but Sensei makes her practice too much, and it ends up falling on Mia to sing them anyway for the festival. So did the sub have Yui singing background vocals with an extremely raspy voice yeah it did the dub did too i could not contain myself that was (laughs) so good it was really funny um yeah i I, at first was i when i was listening to it i was like what is that and then i i realized and i was like they didn't and then it kept happening and i was like they did they (laughs) They ruined her voice, and then she's still singing background vocals, but she sounds like she smokes 60 a day. <laughs> like, it was really I funny. will sing background vocals. Yeah, it's How like, um, do I sound? Always watching. <laughs> so it's like one of our friends. So Walker and Bree have a dog named Coco. Mm-hmm. And one of our friends, just out of the blue, one day just went, Coco! to call her to come to him <laughs> and so now it's like my greatest party trick anytime we're all over there hanging out and they let coco out i'm just like coco <laughs> and everybody just loses it because they're like how do you do it better than the original it's like i don't know this is just my voice <laughs> after so long <laughs> that's really funny i always okay so you know how um ever gone retriever named tilly her real name what? is Tilia. I know. I know, right? Her real name is Tilia, but we call her Tills or Tilly for short. But she, I I always sing to her, Tilia, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> and she responds to that now. <laughs> so whenever you play Simon and Garfunkel in general, she comes to you. She will hang out with you if you play Simon and Garfunkel because of because of me doing that so much oh adorable yeah tilly's funny she always comes to my whistle but if i call her name then she will come when she wants to (laughs) but my whistle she knows that means right now but like yeah oh which is annoying especially in the winter when i have a frozen face in the dog park but you know it's what it is hey that's what that's what scarves are for Mm. Mm. (laughs) that that might work elsewhere my yeah, my brother used to come home from high school with his beard all crystallized. 
I want to grow my beard out to the point to where I can, like, wrap it around my face as, like, its own toboggan. I still don't understand your your thing with toboggans. Look, some of us are right, and then uh, there's you. Some of us are right, and other people live in places where there isn't snow. We have snow here, thank you very much. Sure you do. We just like to call it by its proper term, a sled. I'm so confused. I swear you're the only place in the entire world that does that. Because by toboggan, you mean hat, right? Like a woolly hat? Uh Uh-huh. But a a toboggan's... A a sled is... That has runners. I'm... You genuinely, like, break me every time you bring this up because I just don't... I can't comprehend it. Why do you call it a toboggan? I don't... I'm so confused. Do you ever think that I just do it on purpose at this point? I... I think so, because I... What? (laughs) Careful. Your northern is showing. I'm a southerner! You're in Canada. Yeah, but... I'm in the south of Canada, and I was born in the south of England. Thank you very much. No, I'm a southerner. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a southerner. I'm from Louisiana. Out in the bayou. Now you just look here. (laughs) Now you, do you want some sweet tea? (laughs) Yeehaw! Yeehaw! I swear, sweet niblets. (laughs) Cherry pie. (laughs) <laughs> this podcast is gonna be like an hour fucking long by the time i'm done with it <laughs> <laughs> just banish all of the hooliganry it's gonna be its own separate thing like this whole podcast is just gonna be a blooper reel i can't even upload it <laughs> the, just the, the bloopers of one episode and it's just an episode's long worth of bloopers yeah, it's like a whole two hours episode long and just... <laughs> uh, episode five? Episode five. No, we did that one. Episode six. School festival. So it's the day of the festival. So let me set the scene. It's the day of the festival. There is a haunted house. There is a maid cafe. There are food stalls all outside the high school. Can you picture it? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? It's there. Students are busy. Parents and siblings are running amok. Laughter is in the air and students are aggravated because they have to work rather than go and explore the festival. But there is an overarching amount of excitement about the coming performances in the auditorium. Everyone is hard at work with their different classes' attractions. However, Mio is practicing hard and incredibly nervous about singing in front of the school and everyone that will be in the auditorium. However, I feel like you're one of those overly enthusiastic readers of The Night Before Christmas. And all through the house, not a creature was staring. Not, not even, even a, mouse. a mouse. Not even a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, back to the scene. Mio is nervous. But everyone else in her band have abandoned her. Because, boo. Boo, because they are working hard in their classroom attractions. Terrified Mio goes on a hunt to find them. She finds Wait. Ritsu. Which side of the stage does she enter from? I need the set a little bit better. Stage left. Ah, oh, perfect. Terrified Mio goes to find her classmates. Goes to find her band members. And in doing so, stumbles upon Ritsu running a haunted house. Now Mio is scared of anything remotely scary. And so... She puts up a brave front and enters forth into the haunted house to find Mugi. And in doing so, cries (laughs) and runs away screaming. (laughs) Anyway, she heads back to the music room where, or she goes back to, why do I feel like David Attenborough? In her natural habitat, you will find a wild Mugi practicing, no, a wild Mio practicing her singing whilst other members of her band are drinking tea. Um, but yeah, she goes back to the, <laughs> she goes back to the music room and she starts practicing while other band members are doing their thing. And eventually they all get off of their shift and they go to hang out with Mio. And when they find her, they do a quick practice session. They put on some cute outfits that their music teacher has made for them and <laughs> made for them <laughs> they're made for um, and they head on over to 
the stage. Moogie ends up getting over her performance with the help of her bandmates all banding together behind her. Boo. Boo. And they perform. It goes super well, except for the fact that when they walk off stage, (laughs) Mio trips. Episode 7, Christmas. The girls host a small Christmas party where their sensei is insane. And they have, and she has really bad luck with love. And Yuri and her sister, Ui, are, rela- they're rela- <laughs> their, their relationship is adorable. And they have a really weird but fun time together. And they end up praying at a shrine during the new year for the success of their light music club. And it's just kind of a filler episode. There's no real like band stuff that's happening here. There's no real character development really that's happening here. I suppose you could say about the sensei, like you learn, you get another layer of the sensei and you're kind of really introduced to you, but it is kind of, it's more of a filler episode, I'd say, right? Yes. Character yeah. development. That's what filler episodes are for. Yeah. I just stared at a donut for like three seconds and just was like, there's a dent in it. It's not reforming properly? No, it's not that. Well, or are I mean, you talking guess... about the hole that's in the center of it? Because it's a donut. <laughs> hey, donuts can have non-holes. Like powdered donuts. They don't have holes. Or Boston creams. Hey, Halloween, um, donut shops should turn Boston creams into Boston screams and make the icing like orange and black. But wouldn't that just be raviolis? That's true. They are raviolis. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant women are also raviolis. Question. Technically, we're all raviolis <clears throat> after we have a meal. Yes. So... If two pregnant women have a fight, is that like two Gundams colliding? The baby does not control the pregnant woman, so it's just two raviolis having a go at each other. If you if you throw a ravioli down a hill, is it a ravioli? Okay, episode eight. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, while you're covering episode eight, I'm posting that one in the Discord really quick. <laughs> oh god i'm uh, i'm yeah episode eight freshman reception the new school year starts and the club are doing their best to gather new members but because of the crazy antics like wearing scary animal costumes they end up scaring everyone away but with the help of yui the club uh who is yui's younger sister and is now a freshman in the girls school the club uh, manages to get a prospective member to watch their performance which is for like the opening welcoming ceremony for the freshmen and she ends up asking to join which is where we get introduced to azusa azusa uh, in episode nine, the new club member is having a is having troubles coming to terms with the way that the club runs things. She is a much more serious musician. Parents are both jazz musicians. She's grown up around music. She's been playing guitar since fourth grade. And the other, she doesn't really get why the others sit around drinking tea when they should be practicing. She's a killer guitar player. And nearly quits the club to join another more proper band. But something about their music makes her stay. And they all need their tea drinking bonding time to be able to make the wild carefree music that they do. Basically, it's how they explain away the fact that they never practice, but yet are awesome together is that their tea drinking time bonds them together as bandmates and thus they are incredible musicians despite the fact that they <clears throat> never play. Hey man, look. If You're an all star. You can get your game on. Go play. Hey man. Sorry. I'm just shrekking with you. As I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> if you can power up in Dragon Ball Z just by yelling. Ah! Like that. Blue has achieved Super Saiyan 3. I now have blonde hair. <laughs> Her natural state has been realized. <laughs> I, have, I have blonde hair anyway. That's what I'll say. You've finally been able to achieve your true potential. <laughs> yeah. Episode 10. Another training camp. Guess what? Beach episode times two. Because what is an anime without a beach episode? But what is an incredible anime without two beach episodes in one core? Tan. That's all I remember about this episode is just tan. It's just crispy. Um, yeah, yeah, like 
Harvey Dent Two Face kind of crispy. Yeah, like somebody has uh, fell asleep in the tanning bed. Azutha is struggling with the fact that they hardly ever practice, and she can't decide if Yugi is a musician, is a musical genius or not, because of the fact that the, they were at the camp. They were at the camp, and they were doing camp things, and they finally got around to practicing. And Azusa turns to Yui, and well, Yui turns to Azusa, and she's like, "Hey, what's that thing on the end of your guitar?" And she's like, "Oh, it's a tuner." And she's like, "Oh, well, uh, what does it do?" And she's like, "Oh, it's how I tune my guitar. It tells me when it's when it's right." And she goes, "Well, if you don't use uh, if you don't use a tuner, how do you tune your guitar?" And Yui just goes, "Oh, I just do it by ear." Well, you can't tune a fish, but you can tune a piano. Speaking of which, my piano needs tuning. Hey, is your piano running? No, but my refrigerator is, so I better go catch it. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, they all have a great time at the beach and crispy, and she warms up even more to the others, and even finds Yui secretly practicing late at night, and they kind of bond a little bit more. And it's just kind of, yeah, it's a beach episode, there's antics, there's a little bit of practicing, and it's a fun time. Episode 11, Crisis, or Crises, depending on how you pronounce it. Are you a crises or a crisis person? Crisis. I am also a crisis, but I expect it is probably crises, and I've picked up the North American version of crisis, and all of my Brits will get angry at me because that happened with aluminum as opposed to aluminium. And I apologise, but I can't say that I ever really heard the word aluminum or aluminium much in the 10 years that I lived in the UK as a child. And so, so I say... So, I'm fine with aluminium. Mm-hmm. What I'm not fine with is another way that I heard it pronounced that has scarred me for life. Okay. Aluminium. Aluminium. No, that's wrong. That's really aluminium. wrong. Aluminium. That's wrong on like four levels. Uh, crisis! <laughs> Ritsu is acting strangely after... They end up going to a music shop to get maintenance on Yu's guitar. Everyone thinks that she's upset because Mio was acting kind of coldly towards her. But after she was dragged away from, after she was dragged away from left-handed bases that they had on display. And uh, it turns out that she just had a really bad cold and she was trying to hide it because of the upcoming festival. I feel sorry for left-handed musicians. My father is a left-handed man. He plays a right-handed banjo because um, it's easier for a left-handed person to learn a right-hand an instrument the right-handed way if they're going to learn an instrument because then they have more option for instruments. So my left-handed father plays a right-handed banjo, and a banjo is a bitch to play as it is. Mm. Yep, props. He he plays it with his wrong hand. I play piano with two hands. Shocking that I know. I am so proud of you. I'm not. (laughs) Episode 12. This would normally be the end of the first season, but there are actually two bonus episodes of this core this season. One of them is fully filler. The last one actually, though, is kind of important to the plotline in the progression of their music, which I thought was interesting that they had that as like a bonus episode. Episode 12, anyway, is light music. Yui ends up getting sick because of Ritsu's cold right before the festival. Azusa has to learn the lead guitar just in case, but she hates the idea of performing without Yui. And then her sister ends up actually also being a secret guitar genius, or possibly just super hardworking, because you can't tell if she's the one that taught her sister how to play guitar, or because so she learned guitar so she could teach her sister, or if she's also a musical genius, like her sister is, or what. But either way, her sister can play guitar better than she can. And the day of the festival comes, and Yui leaves her guitar at home because she thought that it was in the music room, so her teacher ends up having to fill in for her for a song, and she runs all the way back home, and then runs all the way to the festival, and makes it for the rest of the performance. And everyone loves them, and I thought it was a really good throwback to the first episode with her Yui running to the school the very first episode late because she's like the opening ceremony except she's not she just read the clock wrong and they end off the the core with her also being late but this time she is actually late um but it's they it's a throwback there and they make the direct comparison which i thought was quite good it was every anytime something like that happens it reminds me of the outsiders what i stepped out from the darkness of the movie house there was only two things on my on my mind paul newman and a ride home i think that's the opening line of the Outsiders, and then the closing line of the Outsiders. The book, or film. Never seen it. 
Ah, oh, I recommend it. I read it in school. It's about greasers and turf wars and, yeah, it's about teenage boys in poverty-stricken areas and gangs in the 50s. Switchblades and milkshakes, poodle skirts, that kind of thing. Huh. Yeah. Um, it's a really good book. It's a really short book, which is nice, but it's a really, really, really good book. We read it in school. It was one of our part of our school curriculum ones, and it's still one of my favorite books of all time. Interesting. It's written by S. E. Hinton, and it is I think she's American or was American, I'm not sure. She wrote it when she was like sixteen years old though. Ah. I yeah, see what she was hinting at. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, really phenomenal book. Phenomenal book, and I recommend it as a read. If you are a decently fast reader, you can read it in a weekend. A weekend? I read it in a day, but I have hyper focus because of my ADHD. So when I sit down to do things, I forget the rest of the world exists, like food and toiletries and breathing and. <laughs> And Unless I, you're watching a really good anime, and then you're like, "I'm gonna go get snacks." It, well, that's the thing is that's how I know whether an anime is good or not because if it's really good, then my hyper focus kicks in, and I forget the rest of the world, and I forget to take notes, and I forget to get snacks, and all that kind of stuff. But if it's not that good, then I get distracted with my ADHD. So that's how I tell. But anyway, festival happens. Everyone has a great time. Episode 13, Winter Days. This is the first of the two bonus episodes. They all go on individual winter day adventures. Yui goes to her sister to have a... Yui and her sister have a hot pot. Azusa looks after a friend's cat. Mugi gets a job at fast food restaurant. Ritsu frets over a possible love letter. And Mio goes to the beach to try and write lyrics in for a new song. And it's just about them going on their own separate adventures and then kind of coming back together to talk about their adventures and meeting and helping each other out. And yeah, it's just kind of like them having their own little stories it's a fully filler episode. There's no real character development. There's no real uh, friendship development or band member development. There's no music development. It's just a purely OVA filler episode. Very sweet one. I did enjoy it. Yeah, it's not anything to write home about. But it raised the biggest question in anime history. Which is? Chocolate and soy milk hot pot or marshmallow <laughs> hot pot? Neither. Mate. Well, I can't have marshmallows anyway because they're not vegetarian. So... Chocolate and soy milk. That's better. Well, what about you? I don't have to answer this. I'm editing. Okay, then, sassy bitch. <laughs> Whoa, hold up. <laughs> hold up a second. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Soy Fine. milk and chocolate. <laughs> uh, <it's a> <laughs> seven years old today what happened to us did we go back in a time machine um i i don't know uh yeah okay episode 14 live house the girls get invited to play a gig at a live house because ritsu is friends with one of the fellow drummers of one of the regular bands there they're all super nervous and inexperienced but the other bands manage to help them out and Yui is fantastic at making friends and helping everyone. Mugi makes tea for everyone. They have a good time. They also have a band name at this point. I think this is the one where they make their band name, or it might have been... No, it was, it was the episode beforehand, uh, episode 12, sorry, two episodes beforehand, where they're getting ready for the festival. Where they have to write down everything for their festival, and they ask what name should go on there, and they end up making the name of the band, which is Afternoon Tea Time, I believe. And yes, yeah, so this is their first live gig at, outside of the school, other than the festivals and the ceremony that they have performed in. They're all super nervous, um, but they end up having a really, really good show. They get backstage passes, their friends come, and... And the other bands end up really helping them out. They learn a lot. And the other bands ask them then to come back as well. So this is the first kind of stage for them. This is why I was intrigued about the fact that this was in a bonus episode and not actually in the main core. Because to me, this is the most prominent step in their music career because it's not them doing something for the school. This is them officially taking a step into pursuing music, you know, properly because they have a gig. They they play a gig that's not just at school. They also come up with their logo in this episode, which is like a teacup with some steamy things coming out on top. And uh, so they come up with their logo and they start talking about the fact that they might need merchandise and or homemade CDs um, of their music to be able to give out their next gigs because the other bands had them 
to sell at that gig and they didn't have anything because it was their first gig and they didn't know what they were doing. Um, but to me, this was a really predominant episode for the development of the band. And I was very intrigued that they had this as a bonus episode and not actually as the main part of the series. What did you think about that? I agree with you in the fact that I feel like it definitely didn't belong as an OVA. Yeah. However, it did definitely give a... I think it did a good job at foreshadowing what's to come as well. Right. It gave good hints as far as what they're actually planning on doing for season two. And then I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the film is going to be them finally playing the Budokan. Yeah, so all the way through the um, series, they, their main goal is to play the Budokan concerts is stadium area thing, arena. It's um, like Japan's second biggest arena mm-hmm. next to the Tokyo Dome. Yes. And yeah, that's like their, their thing. But this is such a, I don't know, yeah, I don't know why they have this as an OVA. Because in my mind, this is much more of a predominant episode. I think when it's on Netflix, you don't notice as much because it just, you just play next episode, next episode, next episode. And so you get through the 12 episodes and then it immediately plays Winter Days and then Live House right after. So it plays the OVA. So when you're on Netflix, you don't notice that they're bonus episodes, really. Well, here's the weird part, because if you look up the... If you look at the Wikipedia page for k and I know it's Wikipedia, take it with a grain of salt. Anyway, they have the anime listed as 13 episodes together, and then they have a standalone episode in between it and the second season. Right. So, which one is technically considered the 13th episode and which one is considered the OVA? Because even though they're ordered in that order, maybe Netflix uploaded them backwards? Oh, that would make sense. So Winter Days is the OVA and then Live House is the 13th episode. Because it's winter time in both episodes. Yeah. So they very well could have been flip-flop. Yeah. So it's Because Live House to me does not feel like an OVA. It definitely doesn't. So I don't know. I'm intrigued. Yeah. That makes me curious. That I, I agree with that. That makes me curious. You never know. Never know. You never know. So that is is the end of the first season and the two OVAs. But there is a second season, which uh, you said was 24 episodes? 26. 26 episodes. And then there's also a film as well. So if you want us to cover... (coughs) Bless you. Thank you very much. That came out of nowhere. So if you want us to cover those in the future, please feel free to let us know on social media. But before we get into all of the plugs and such for wrapping up this episode, I am curious about your overall opinions on the show, your rating of the show, your rating of the music, the animation, the comedy, all that kind of stuff. Because we did briefly go over that in the beginning, but we haven't touched on that since kind of delving into the episodes. So what did you think? I'd say sevens across the board. Seven! Yeah, I feel you. Because it everything was really good. It never necessarily crossed over into great. Yeah. And so that's why six being good, seven being really good. Yeah, I'm somewhere between a six and a seven. Yeah, like, I laughed a lot. I enjoyed the music. It wasn't, I don't know, like, nothing never truly, like, went above and beyond to me. Even though it was funny, I never just, like absolutely lost my shit like I did over Tonica. That's the thing. I've been comparing it in my mind a lot to Are You Lost? Mm -hmm. Because they're the same kind of premise of the group of girls, some sexual humor, jokes, small skits, overarching kind of plot thing, you know? So they kind of, they have a lot of similar characteristics between the show. Are You Lost made me laugh a lot more than this did. And the only thing that to me equals the two out is the fact that Are You Lost didn't have any music. This has music. I thought the music in this was decent. Oh uh, yeah, it's decent. It's a decent anime. It It's not one that I'd recommend binging. I actually found it really hard to binge. I got really bored. I didn't want to continue watching it. I pushed myself to keep watching it because we had to record. If we were not recording, I would have stopped watching. I think, yeah, this one would have gone on my whole list. Like I'd have gotten on to like episode seven or eight and stopped. I don't know what the second season is like. I am actually the last episode because of how Life House ended with them doing their first gig made me super excited to watch the second second season. Um, so I think they ended off on a really good note because yeah, I did immediately want to just keep watching the second season, but I stopped watching because I didn't want to end up confusing the second season with this season for the recording. But I will watch the second season after we finish recording because the last episode episode 14 was really good and it made me excited for the rest of it but there are some really boring episodes in the middle that i didn't enjoy 
See, I feel like season two probably has a lot more to offer as well. Yeah. Because if you look at top ten music animes of all time, K-On! is typically on everyone's list. Yeah, and that's why I was kind of disappointed in this, because I'd heard such great things about it, and then the first season just isn't it for me. But I'm excited about the second season. I do definitely want to give it a shot for the second season. We might have to cover it at some point. Yeah. Who's to say? Because I have a feeling I'm going to end up watching it too, just whenever I have spare time. Yeah. Whenever that's going to be at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. So look forward to that at some point. Yeah. I'm definitely just interested Just like about on the, the point well. of actually covering something at some point, we do fully intend on covering Seeing Yesterday for Me at some point. Just yes. not right now because it doesn't fit the theme. Yeah, and we do have the next couple of months solidly booked up, but we were we do have a um, romance month planned in the future, um, and so it may just slot into that month because you said it was very romantic. So it was very romantic, but it was good enough to the point to where I actually wanted to cover it. Because, like I said, I got all the way through episode six, and I was like, you know this might actually be worth covering because it it did a really good job of holding my attention because for it to not be a comedy, because I'm very much a rom-com slice, slice of life kind of person, mm-hmm. but I've never truly been much of one for romances, just true mm-hmm. romances. Mm-hmm. So it did a good job at pulling me in and keeping me invested because the story was unique and different. And mm-hmm. Actually not cringy. Yay, I appreciate that. Yeah, because that was one of the things to where because I'm gonna t- <laughs> I'm gonna try not to give you anything that's too over the top cringy, unless it's meant to be so, in which case you're just kinda screwed. I'm sorry. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch Rent a Girlfriend for Romance Month. That would be wrong. I'm not that big I, of a jerk. I I struggle. I struggle. But what about yeah, you? Yeah, I'm with you. What do you though. rate it? Um, between a six and a seven. Six and yeah, a half. Six, six and a half. I'm gonna go with a six and a half. I thought that there were some really funny moments. There are some standout moments in here that I thought were really, really class. For instance, that sensei running through the to- the hallway moment where the animation style changes and it looks like she is all of a sudden in Demon Slayer or something. And it was that cracked me up. I thought it was so funny. I thought that was really, really good. The last episode left me off on a really high note. And that always makes me feel good. You know, and the last episode's good. Makes you feel good. I also enjoyed the classic anime tropes that went throughout the series. I thought they were really funny. I thought the music was pretty good. Uh, I am aware that it is also not the genre that tends to appeal to me, so I am not its target audience. However, I did think that it was really good and it didn't take away from the story for me, and I didn't end up skipping any of the music because I didn't find it, like, boring or whatever. I I enjoyed listening to the music. The OP and ED were decent as well. Nothing to, like, get hyped over, but I thought they were pretty good. And I, uh, I, yeah, I thought there were some really good trips. Certain things in there really did annoy me. I, th- I agree with you that they held on to moments for too long. Um, and they did definitely lose my attention in quite a few places of the story. I found that I ended up getting frustrated with the lack of character. Like, I ended up getting frustrated that they didn't practice. <laughs> and I know that's kind of like their shtick, is that mm-hmm. they just sit around and have tea. But I wanted development. You know, I wanted to see them go from point A to point B. And I didn't see them go from point A to point B because you start off with your main character, Yui. Well, she's not even really a main character because they kind of all are main characters, but uh, who you perceive to be the main character, Yui, who doesn't know how to play guitar. And then the next time you see her actually play the guitar, she's almost pro because of her unexplained magical gift of being able to play the guitar. There are you know some I mean? people that are like that, though. Like, some people that can see something be played and then copy it. Yeah, and I understand And I feel that. like that's more or less what she did at first, and then she might have learned to play from that. It wasn't explained. Yeah, that's the thing, is if they had said flat out, yeah, I just, I think it, they leave you with this kind of question as to whether or not, and I don't know if that's intentional, they intentionally want you to be confused about her character, because if they do, then fine. But I was left with this, I'm still left with this thing of, I don't know what her deal is, and I watched an entire season of the anime and I still don't know what her deal is, and I didn't get that satisfaction of her progress. I didn't get that. Because even if they had said she picked up a guitar and she's just this awesome player, she can just, she has this musical gift, that would at least give you some satisfaction of being like, oh yeah, she's incredible, that's amazing. But you're just left with this thing of like, is she incredible? Like, I know that she has like perfect pitch, 
and this kind of stuff, which is incredible. But like, I don't not it's I what? And Coming that is season two. Backstory. Yeah, and honestly, yeah, it's it's just kind of unsatisfying to me. Um, and that did kind of put a damper on the overall show. It's just the the times when you're watching it and you all of a sudden go, wait, so she is a genius. Wait, no, so she is really stupid. Wait, no, she's really stupid and a genius. Wait, no, so it's this way, so it's that way. She's just forgotten everything about playing guitar. She has never played guitar in her life before. Like, what? You know what I mean? What? Exactly. <laughs> no, and, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and to me that wasn't that wasn't a good thing. Mm-hmm. But I also can't say it was necessarily a bad thing. I just don't think it was a for me thing. I think other people would have found it really funny. I think other people would have found it a trope that they really enjoyed, which is why I think it was on a lot of people's top 10 lists. Although I do think that uh, there's a good chance that the second season and film has something to do with that. But I personally think that maybe that trope just wasn't one that applies to my personality. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it completely. Yeah. So yeah, six and a half. My brain died. Like there's just smoke coming out of my head at this point. Uh, But yeah, I'm going to go with the six and a half for this. So yeah. So plugs. Plugs. You can find the absolutely lovely Blue Lavender at twitch.tv forward slash Blue Lavender Monday through Saturday, except for Wednesdays or whatever day we decide to record this at this point. Mm -hmm. Streaming from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, doing mainly art with a little bit of Minecraft mixed in here or there, and occasionally Spyro on Tuesdays, because who doesn't love to rage on a Tuesday? Tuesday Rage. You can also find her on Instagram and Twitter at Blue Lavender STM, and she also runs an absolutely lovely Instagram for her dog Tilly at the best Tilly Bean. Mm-hmm. If you like adorable doggos, go check that out. If you like art, go check out her Instagram. Twitter is mainly just for live Twitch updates. Yeah, and that there over there, there that dude there is Bridal Doodle Dandy. Um, and you can follow him on Twitch at Brad Carter Gaming, although he is currently on a streaming hiatus. However, if you miss his face, you can find him on Instagram at Brad Carter Gaming as well. He does not have a Twitter because he runs our Twitter and our Instagram at BB Anime on both. We also have ourselves a whole website where you can find all of our previous episodes all archived. So if you missed one or you haven't been listening from the beginning, you've popped along somewhere through and you're intrigued to find out how embarrassingly cringe we were in our very early episodes, you can go and listen to our archive on the website www.bnbanime.com. You can also find an informational page there about about us, about future projects that we are working on, projects that we have already worked on. A little bit about us, you can put a face to the name if you wish to know what we look like. You can also see some of our artwork on there as well, which is super fun. We also, if you haven't had enough of us and you would like more, subscribe to us on YouTube. We have two, not one, but two YouTube channels. One of them is a regular uploads of this very doodle dandy podcast, um, which is BB Anime. And it has all of our previous archive episodes with some fun thumbnails. And it's just, yeah, the list of the podcast. So you can go back and listen to all of our archive on there as well. If you don't want to head on over to the website and or your regular listening platform of like Spotify and things of that nature, you'll also find us on those. You, we also, the second YouTube channel that we have, we post on less frequently, but it does have some voice acting projects. There will be a new upload on there very shortly. So keep your eyes peeled. Drop us a a follow, a sub on both if you wish to do so. And yeah, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Brad posts some fun memes on those and it's a good time. We enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's everything. So next week, Kids on the Slope. Slope Kids, that one, yeah. <laughs> Slopey Kids. <laughs> so, outside of that, thank you all so much for listening. Blue and I greatly appreciate it. Next week, we have Kids on the Slope for the final week of Music Month before Spooky Month begins. Ooh. Da, 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 da. But until then, we'll catch y'all next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.